A lot of people are turning around and go, wow, that was the bottom, that was the bottom, that was the bottom. Okay, before a bottom can be made, can we at least reclaim the 50-day moving average, right? Again. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great trading week. Phenomenal action. Uh, if you look at the scoreboard this week, you see uh, Dow, you know, okay, right? Less than 1%. You had the S&P crawling up about 2%. Uh, big move obviously came uh, in the NASDAQ space, right? Uh, NASDAQ 100, or actually NASDAQ Composite, uh, went up about 4.5%, a little more than 4.5%. What really uh, stood out this week was the, the massive leadership. And you saw it all week. And, you know, some of the stocks rested on Friday. But you saw this really, really big leadership from the biggest, right, the biggest cash uh, hoarders. You know, Microsoft, uh, Apple, big, big moves. You had Amazon. Really, really big moves. You had Google, right? You could go through the whole. You could go through the whole space. Obviously, Tesla. And we'll get to Tesla in a second. Uh, had a phenomenal, phenomenal move. But from the macro point of view, and this is kind of where I want to keep uh, this update short and sweet because I got 38 million basketball games today. Um, so let's talk about it, right? Here's what we we, we know, right? Uh, we know we've been in a bear market for the last six months. That's that's undeniable. Uh, the longer we stayed. Uh, below the 50-day moving average, the higher probability we were going to go lower. And that was pretty consistent for, you know, pretty much the last six months, even going through the first time that we lost the 50-day uh, all the way up on January the 4th. It started a pretty aggressive, uh, nasty cycle. And the, the one thing that continued to play out, the theme that continued to play out was, even though we we're in a bear market and the market was going lower, we still had pockets of strength in between all the selling and you would have you know pretty good run-ups and again this is kind of you've been watching the video uh just in the last several months you kind of know that was coming kind of the, the common denominator throughout this bear market you had your runs you had your runs uh even reclaiming the 50-day moving average here and kind of going on an extra an extra run but the point is once we lost the 50-day it started a nasty selling cycle as well and what we saw this week was for, first of all phenomenal action you got to give the bulls uh, a lot of kudos uh, incredible, right? Every dip was bought this week. Uh, all data was negated. All Fed talk was negated. Everything was negated. The most important part was the, the structure, the organic structure, uh, the out of the money deep expiration, which we saw in every single leader. That's why these stocks uh, started uh, to really, really run on, on a really heavy outside um, money betting. And the most important part is we started reclaiming bigger levels, not the biggest level yet, but bigger levels. And you can see that. Here's, you know, here's, let me show you the first one. Here's the reclaim of the 20. Here was obviously the reclaim of the 50. We rallied. What happened when we lost the 50? We started going lower. We'll get to that in a second. Here's another reclaim of the, of the 20. Started rallying for about, you know, for about seven, eight days. Once we started losing the 20, we went lower here. And here's kind of fast forward to this past week. We reclaimed the 20 day moving average. And now we are at the 50. Not only are we at the 50, Friday got rejected perfectly, like a perfect reject at the 50-day moving average. And if you watched Thursday night's video, that's what we talked about. We talked about, I believe, you know, I believed that we were going to have one more day of aggression, right? Um, I thought the first time that we were going to test uh, the 50-day moving average, we were going to get rejected just because, again, it's such a major area, it's such a big sentiment change. You're not going to just blast through the 50-day moving average on your first try. And kind of if you flip that reverse, any market that's coming down into rising support and hits the 50-day moving average, there's always a high probability that buyers are going to defend that 50-day moving average the first time and bounce. So here was kind of the reverse effect. So we did have that bounce, right? excuse me, we did have that move into the 50-day moving average. The market opened up lower. The jobs number wasn't great initially, but we talked about it last night, well, Thursday night's video, and we talked about it pre-market. I, I believe everything was gonna go green just because of the momentum and the idea that everybody was was assuming all those betters, all those bets that were buying, you know, the 750 weeklies on Tesla, they were buying, you know, the 17s on, on Amazon, they were buying all these different stocks with anticipation of them going into the 50 day moving average, they were going to get paid off. And that's exactly what happened. The market really discounted whatever data that was 
um, from the jobs number and the market started really going well, right? Really, really going well. And right when we got to the 50 day moving average, if you, if you go on my regular Twitter account, you know, I posted this, we're probably gonna get rejected. Here's the 50 day moving average. The last thing you wanna do is start putting on fresh positions at the 50 day moving average because you're probably gonna have a, you know, a really tough time. And then yada, 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 we got rejected off the 50 day moving average. We actually went red, but the good news is the bulls did not roll over, right? It wasn't a scenario that we went red and then lost 200 points on the NASDAQ. We went red, buyers came back in, we actually, caught a fractional uh, positive close on the queues, which really sets up for this week. So again, the pivots on Friday were great. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, we talked about this for, on Thursday's video, Wednesday, what we thought was gonna happen. Tesla was a monster. Roblox had great option flow. Rivian had great option flow. Uh, you had really great action on Friday. That's over. We don't care, right? We don't live in the past. We always talk about uh, the first day of your, today is the first day of your life. Okay, whatever happened in the past, in the past, we don't live there anymore. What's going to happen now? And going into this week, you, you, there's no possible, and, and I, I can't underemphasize or over overstate, whatever the hell that word is, how important this week is for the bulls, right? A lot of people are turning around and go, wow, well, that was the bottom, that was the bottom, that was the bottom. Okay. Before a bottom can be made, can we at least reclaim the 50-day moving average, right? Again, stop trying to overthink, okay? Stop trying to get cute. Nobody cares. Nobody cares if we predicted the bottom. That's irrelevant. That's water cooler talk. If you're looking for likes and shares and all that stuff, well, then that's what you're doing. Nobody cares, right? Nobody, this isn't a, nobody's going to give you a trophy. So before we could call a bottom, number one, we need to reclaim the 50-day moving average. And now we are right back to where we were right over here. And now the question was, can we do it, right? That's the million dollar question. Um, are we putting in a top? Did we put in the top on Friday, hitting the 50-day and getting rejected? Or is Monday or Tuesday going to come, reclaim this 296.75 area and then start, it, start moving up. There's only there's also one little area here above the 50 day that needs to get cleared out. But again, let's you know let's put the cart in front of the horse. The bulls need to reclaim 296.75 on the close. Everybody see that, guys? That's where it got rejected on Friday, right? This the slight blue line is the 50 day moving average. There there is no there is no room for debate. Okay, the bulls are either going to reject, excuse me, reclaim the 296.75 level on the 50 day moving average and start making its way to the 300 level, the next supply zone, or they're gonna get rejected again and close below 289, which is the rising five day support and go low. Okay, right now, us sitting here, at, on Saturday morning, we're guessing, okay? You could turn around and say, yes, that was the bottom. The bear case is turning around and say, well, what are you talking about that was the bottom? We just got rejected off the 50-day moving average and they couldn't get through just the way they couldn't get through right here, right here, right here, right here. So this week is super duper important. If you're a swing trader and you're looking for risk on, which basically means starting to build the book, you need a close for, for, for you to have a substantial shot, a puncher shot for this market to expand uh, into the summer after Labor Day, we need to put in a close over this 296.75. If that's the case, start looking at your, your favorite stocks. If they start mirroring the NASDAQ 100 and start putting in closes over the 50-day moving average by themselves, then it's gonna start a green light. Now, here's, here's how you manage your swing. If your stock, okay, or, uh, or the Qs start closing below the 50-day moving average, that is your, your light, right? That is your clue get the hell out of my inventory, I want nothing to do with this market because if you didn't do so, right, you had every opportunity to do so the first couple of days here under the 50 day moving average. If you turn around and say, well, let me just see what happens or technical analysis doesn't work. Well, you had the next three months of deep help and that's exactly what it was. You might turn around and say, well, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was deep help. We had, we, the, the NASDAQ literally went, the Qs literally went from 353 uh, to 269 in a matter of two months. Don't tell me you held your position, you were able to uh, to sleep at night, right? Th that was your clue. Once we close below the 50, the risk is off, the risk is gone. You need to go into sell bias mode and you need to clear out all positions. Once we get above the 50 day moving average, and that's exactly why this week is super duper important, once we get above the 50 day moving average, then risk goes back on because that's the really shortest term 
of macro supply that gets reclaimed and the money will start flowing in. But any close below, that's your secret sauce to get out. The S&P, uh, the S&P will use, uh, and we'll use uh, the SPIs as a perimeter. It's lagging a little bit, right? Because again, there's a lot of companies that have exposure to China and this, that, the other thing, supply shortages, this, that, the other thing, not that the, not that the members of the queues don't, but there's a lot of companies that are, that are still trying to get their business model straight, you know, go, going in the right direction. So the spies are lagging a little bit on um, on the queues. For for the spies to really get going, number one, they need to test this this high here of 390 and close above it. But for the spies to really get going, you see the 50-day moving average here. For the spies to really get going, they would need a close above 396. We're still far away. We're still about eight points away on the spies. But again, the question is, if the Qs reclaim the 50-day moving average this week, are they going to pull up the spies? Probably, right? But if the Qs get rejected off the 50-day moving average and close below the five, the lagger, right, which is which is the spies are probably going to roll over faster than the Qs because of their lagger on the way up. So we're, we're, we're still a little bit away from reclaiming the 50-day moving average on the spies. When you look at the Russell and you look at the small cap group, again, it's getting there, right? It's getting there, not as uh, aggressive as uh, the NASDAQ, but it's getting there slowly but surely. I think the, the IWM needs to put in a, a close uh, you know, above 178. If we if the IWM can get above 178 level, then again, you're gonna, you're gonna it's gonna start fueling uh, speculation money to come in. So you know, we're 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 already set up, man. We're we're kind of do or die. This is not you know technical analysis is not you know it, it's not it's not a discussion. These are big levels. Uh, Nasdaq is obviously uh, the barometer that I trade because 99 percent of the stocks that I trade are are probably going to be members of the queues or. Um, or, uh, or or just part of a group that just that just convenient with, with the whole with the whole run up. So it's very very important. I, I think by Monday or Tuesday we're going to know exactly where we are. A close above the 50 day super bullish. A rejection again at the 50 day. And if we close below, you know, two two eighty nine, right? If we close below two eighty nine two ninety, that's going to be a major sell signal. So a two ninety seven up. 290 down and everything in between is guessing. Everything else is opinions. Nobody cares about our opinions. Nobody cares about the data. Nobody cares what you think is going to happen. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. Stop thinking, okay? Let the data tell you. Let the closing price tell you. Let the price action tell you what happens next that you can make a, a decision like an adult with technicals instead of making a decision like a child with emotions. Nah, 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 I can't hear you, okay? No, no. It's all about price action. It's all about the closing price. And it's all about the options market dictating what's going to happen next. Uh, big news, obviously, after the close is, you know, nothing really surprising. I mean, we talked about it, you know, numerous times over the last couple of months. You know, Tesla, uh, it looks like the deal is uh, pretty much a dead deal, right? It looks like Elon Musk is walking away. Um, you know, not really surprised. We were talking about it for, for, for months now. It's, it was just taking too long, right? Really, really too long to... Uh, to play out. Tesla was strong. Tesla has been by far the best mover of the week. Uh, it reclaimed all these levels here. It's pre-markets trading on the top of this channel here. Um, I think any close above two, uh, 772 will probably get a move into the 790s. We'll probably get a move to the 810. But again, we'll see how uh, Tesla acts. Uh, the you know other stocks in the in the group have been great. Uh, Nvidia saw really really aggressive call buying uh, towards the end of the week. Uh, not as great as all these other charts, but hey, if this thing starts breaking down this channel here, we did see uh, we did see some pretty aggressive uh, 160, 165, 170 calls uh, going into this week. We saw some 190s uh, towards the end of the month. Uh, Amazon has just been a rock star. We still see a bunch of 18s and 20s rolling in. Tesla, towards the end of the day, you know, we saw the 750s, 760s, 770s, a little bit of the 800s. So, you know, the, the market is set up here. So that's it, guys. Sometimes, uh, you know, you need to figure things out. Sometimes you need the market to kind of uh, do the leg work for you and kind of get more clues before you can strike. All the clues are here, right? This is do or die. Uh, 296.75, sink or swim, whatever you want to, uh, whatever you want analogy you want to use, but this is the line in the sand. We're either going to close above it and start a macro move higher or get rejected, close below the five day and continue this bear market. Guys, God bless. Uh, research is ready. Charts are set up. 
Uh, now the question is, do we confirm? Guys, God bless. I wish you all the best. And hopefully I'll see you guys all on Monday. Take care.